The Taycan is a funny one for me because I've been driven in it, but I've never actually driven one myself. And the chance that I had to drive it once, it was all booked up. But finally, Porsche has invited me down to the HQ to actually take this on the road and try it out and see what it's like. And for the first time, I'm driving the Taycan 4S Cross Turismo. This is a fantastic estate car. And if I was looking for an electric estate, this would be the one that I'd go for. This is 118,000 pounds round about there with all the extras. But the base price for this is around 88,000 pounds. So it's on the pricier side, but it's a Porsche. You are getting a premium level of a vehicle that gives you so much for your money, like tech and looks. And it's just all round fantastic looking car. I really like it. But let's talk about the design. This color here is the ice gray metallic, which costs as an extra around 1,683 pounds. Don't quote me. I think it's just around by that much money. So one thing you notice across this guy is there's a list, a long list of options that you can actually opt for for this and make it yours. But moving on with the design, you can look how very much of a Porsche it is in terms of the design DNA. We've got the Porsche logo on the front. This headlights here, LED headlights, they're fantastic as well because parts of it can intelligently switch off if there's an oncoming vehicle, especially at nighttime when it's all dark, so you don't blind the other driver. On here we have the side curtains, which direct airflow over the car as well, over the tires, uh, so that way it's good for the aerodynamicness of the car. And what one thing you notice as well is we have this extra lip at the bottom here, it goes around the car, that's an extra kit for off-roading. They say off-roading, but I wouldn't say this is built for like off-roading as such. It's more if you're gonna go on gravel and all that kind of stuff, your paintwork is protected and it just adds to the styling as well. I think it makes it look sportier, which I really like. Looking below here, if you can just ignore the, uh, the dead flies, RIP. Uh, we have the ADA system here and then when we move to this side here, we can see these two flaps here, which opens dynamically and they can close as well. So that can cool the radiators. I think there's two radiators in here. Uh, it will cool them when they need to be cooled and it will open up uh, and close when they, need, when they need to do so. Again, helping with the aerodynamicness uh, of the car. And moving on to the side, we have the Taycan Turbo Aero wheels, which they've, they've opted for the 20 inch uh, size on here, which is uh, you got your Michelin uh, Pilot Sport 4 on there for extra grip and just performance and aerodynamic performance. And we got the air curtain here as well. And for charging on both sides, we have charging ports available. This side, we have both DC and AC. On the other side, it's just AC. And this supports up to 270 kilowatt charging speed, which is super fast, if you can find one that is. This is quite snazzy, actually, the way you open it. Uh, so if you swipe underneath that little thing there, that opens up the charge ports. And if you want to close it, swipe it again, closes that port away, tucked away nicely. And then we have a wing mirror with the camera underneath it, which supports uh, your parking and all that stuff. And the door handle also pops out. Uh, so when you open it up, so if I just uh, let me grab my keys, and we open this, the door handle just pops out for you so you can then get inside of the car. We move along, it's just nice and smooth. There's not a lot, a lot going on there, really nicely designed and slick. But here is where the stories get, it gets a bit interesting because you've got this big hinged so, uh, shoulder there, which adds to that sporty, beefy look that it has. At the moment, I've got the uh, suspension raised, so normally this would be lower as well. So compared to the standard saloon version, this is 20 millimeters higher, but you can increase that lift up to 30 millimeters higher as well. So this can get really high off the ground, especially if you live, in, if you live somewhere where you need to go over like uh, speed bumps, like, like for me that lives in London, this would be perfect for that sort of stuff. We see the uh, off-roading pack here again, just on the side here, nice and color coded, a match there, a bit of black cladding all around there, just a mix and match there. Looks really good, I really like it. On the front, we have a six uh, pin uh, piston calipers. On the back, we have four of them. Uh, the front is slightly bigger as well in terms of brake disc. You also get this uh, roof rails as well. This is 413 pounds, around about that much. So that's an extra as well, but it allows you to mount your bike racks and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to take this off-roading, this would be perfect for that. Moving along to the back, actually before we go to the back, you can see that sloped rear as well, and that doesn't actually affect the headroom in the back, which we'll look at when we get inside of the car. Uh, moving to the back, we have the uh, off-roading pack continues here, so it gives it that extra sporty look again. You got the uh, glossy finished Taycan 4S logo and the embedded Porsche logo in that light bar that goes all across the back. Again, looking very nice and snazzy, very Porsche. And we get a back window wiper, which is 
kind of rare these days to have those on your car and it's not an extra, so good news there. And there's a little button here that allows you to get inside of the boot. And this is electronically controlled, as you can see there. And as you can see, we have a lot of stuff in the boot, which again brings me to the boot space that we have in here. This is around 463 litres or so, 460 litres of boot space. So this is very practical and you have a big opening as well. So this big aperture means you can load up things very easily. It's low enough. You can even lower it a bit further down to get things in the car a lot easier uh, than you normally would. And uh, there's a little gap in here underneath here where you can put your charger, but to have a bit more room in here, there's another space at the front, so you have a frunk in this. I think it's around 48 litres of frunk space. I'll put all the numbers on the screen in case I'm getting it all confused or anything like that. But yeah, do you, you do have a, a space on the front so you can put your charger and all that kind of stuff in there. But yeah, plenty of space there. You can fold the seats down again to get even more space to load up more stuff uh, inside of the uh, 4S. And here we are. I know I said 40 something earlier, but it's actually 84 litres of frunk space here so you can store good amount of stuff here. This is quite deep. This is pretty big and on the back i think i said 460 but it's actually 446 liters uh, of boot space so again plenty of space there practical fast and a good looking uh, estate car so this is a very practical car i'm talking about father's day i think uh, if, if someone wants to buy me a father this father's day present this would be the one uh, for that. This is really good. One of my favorite things about the Forez Cross Turismo is the space in the back. I think it's very comfortable for the passenger. So if you're sitting like this, the hip to knee ratio, the way it's sort of bent is really nice. And the way they're able to do that is because the foot well is actually quite dipped in compared to the way you normally have it. So for example, my Tesla Model 3, your knees are quite raised up right like this, which makes it a bit uncomfortable if you're gonna be sitting like that for a very long period of time. Unfortunately, there's still a transmission tunnel here. Uh, although you do pay for a pack here, which gives you four plus one sitting, I think it's around, around 300 pounds or so as an extra, but that means you can actually sit someone here, but they'd have to put either feet on either side to sit there. And you have your arm rest here. So if no one's sitting in the middle, you can have cup holder, or you can just rest your arm like this so you can sit there comfortably. Uh, which is really nice. And when it comes to charging, there are two USB-C ports here. So nicely tucked away underneath here for your passengers to charge uh, their devices. There's no full USB, but that's okay as well because this day and age, everyone's got USB-C cable to charge their devices, which is nice. You also get a nice panoramic sunroof, which goes all the way to the back and is tinted as well to allow for shade. Even with the seats as it is, this is not how no I would normally sit. Um, this is actually in the uh, easy entry mode, so it's actually drawn back. So normally that will go further, further up. I still have good amount of knee room, good amount of headroom as well. Even with that sloped uh, design, that shooting brake design, it still feels really nice and roomy and comfortable, which is the most important thing for me if I was a passenger in one of these. Up front, the premium level of this car has to offer continues. It's so good in here. It feels very nice, familiar as well. Uh, it's not too overwhelming in terms of the way things are controlled. You have three displays here. You can have one more for the passengers over there, but I think I would find that annoying, where especially when you have kids in the front or someone you just want to be mischievous. That's probably not one I want to have there. So it's actually really nice just to have the three display. You have the analog clock over there, which you can also pay extra to have like a compass placed in that position there, but it looks really nice and premium with some hits of the 911 here in terms of the way things are. You have a 16.8 inch uh, curved display here. This comfort seats is also eight way electronically controlled. So you can get really comfortable as much as you want to get. The steering wheel itself has minimal amount of buttons, which is good. And it's Alcantara Sports uh, finishing, which is nice and just comfortable and has a good level of grip as well. It's not too big. It's nicely weighted when you're driving. It's really nice uh, in terms of the way things are. This is nice and sharp. You've got the three dials there. So your speed, uh, you know, your rev counter, you can see the range. Here we have this display, which just allows you to control uh, things like your climate control is always there. You've got a little trackpad here, which allows you to control things as well. And to open the doors and the boots, etc., you can also use this one, well, not the door. You can use it to open the front, the boot, and close it as well. You've got one for the ACDC charging port, so you can uh, open and close those. You've got heated seats, uh, control there. And then you have your shortcuts uh, buttons, so like your music, telephone, uh, sat satellite navigation. I've got my Apple phone connected at the moment, so you can use that to quickly go into Apple CarPlay uh, if you need to do so. Or you can press car. And when you press car, that will operate uh, this screen here, which allows you to change settings and all that kind of stuff. So this is uh, Porsche's own communication system uh, or Porsche communication management system, which allows all this to function very well. You have two cup holders here and then underneath here, which is nice and discreet, which I really like. You can press this and open this up. And in here you have your wireless charging, which is nicely tucked away and two USB-C ports and a 12 volt uh, port 
uh, there as well. So nicely tucked away, nice and discreet, which I really like. The seats are very comfortable. It's um, part leather, so not fully leather, and it's just really nice, nice Tycan blacked out logo here, nice and discreet again. What you notice about the uh, vent uh, here as well is they don't actually move like this. So if you want to control them, you can control them using the system here. So it allows you to direct where they're going, the intensity and so on. So very, very nice in here. So a bit more in depth, this is very simple. Scroll up and down to see all your icons, which are very sharp. You have Apple CarPlay wirelessly. Um, you also have your phone, car settings, uh, air conditioning and so on. So in air conditioning, I know I said this doesn't actually move, but this is where you can control things. So if you put that in our eco mode for now, um, so you have here got diffuse, focused, individual. So if you go into individual here, we can actually direct where things go and then you can control the intensity on the side there. So as you can see, it's very straightforward, very easy to get on with. And then we have dual climate control as well. So the passengers can do what they want on their side or you can sync it. So it does exactly the same thing as, as both sides. You have your air quality. So your ionizer, you have to pay extra for that, but this allows for better. So if you suffer from things like uh, hay fever in the summer, this would be really good at clearing things like pollen and all that stuff. You've got pre-cool, so you can get things nice and hot and toasty in here before you get in, for example, really nice and straightforward. Uh, if we press that menu again, uh, it takes us back to here. You have over the air updates as well. For example, we have a new update that's uh, made the battery a bit more uh, efficient, for example, and adds a bit more speed, I believe. But anyway, they can always release new updates uh, for the car, which is really good. You've got Sports Chrono, uh, which is an extra pack. So there you can do a bit of a lap timing and all that kind of stuff. You can, re you can record them and evaluate if you need to do so afterwards. Uh, go back there into the home. And then actually let's press this car uh, logo here. You can see some of the options that you have. So in drive, you can have your different drive modes here. So you have, like I was saying, you have gravel, range, normal, sports and sport plus. So gravel just adds extra grip. Uh, so if, or you're just driving in a very gravelly, stony kind of vibe, uh, you can do all that stuff. In normal, if you select normal, for example here, um, you can then go here and adjust things. So like your chassis, you can do normal sports and sport plus. Chassis level, you can race it high, medium, lowered, really low, uh, or you can have it lifted up like we did before. And you have your energy recuperation mode. So you can have it on or, or auto. So auto, we uh, will adjust depending on what the road situation is. Uh, and then you have your electronic sport sound, which adds that fake synthesized noise, but it sounds really good actually. It's one of the best I've heard in an electric car. We have our assistance. You have your basic assistant uh, that's active, so warn and brake assistance, emergency stop function. Uh, you can tick those on or off or deactivate them if you need to do so, but I just leave them active. It's good for the safety. You have your park assist, which uses all those cameras around the car to help you park your car safely uh, without hitting things. It's actually quite a big car, you know? Uh, it's also heavy, it's about 2.2 tons in terms of weight. You have your lane keep assist. You can look at your trip uh, data as well. You have your comfort settings, so ambient lighting, which you pay extra for as well. Uh, you have driver's seat settings and comfort entry, so all this will move, the seats will move backwards and forwards if you need to. Uh, so you've got all those options there as well. So for sound system, we have a Bose sound system there, which is also an extra. Uh, it's not a lot of money actually compared to what you normally pay for most of these things. I think it's just like under a thousand pounds or around, a, around about a thousand pounds. Uh, but that means you can have a better sound system and you can adjust things like your bass and treble very easy to get on with there again. Uh, very, very, very smooth. Uh, but yeah, it sounds really good from my experience so far with it and uh, can't complain in that area. In all, it's very, very straightforward, very easy to get on with. And depending on which packs you've paid for and what you've done, you might get slightly different things there, but that's pretty much where you get there. And then you've got this extra display here that's buried in a leather housing here. On here, we have some quick uh, menu options. So up top here, you have your shortcut button. So I can go back to Apple CarPlay very quickly, or I can go back into car settings there very quickly. Then you have your climate control, which I was saying you can sync it or separate it. So your passengers can also control their side. Heated seats are there, little track pad area. This also has a haptic feedback. So that way you actually feel what you're pressing. You have your uh, control for opening your charge ports, your boots, your frunk, and then there's also your charging menu so you can preheat things and all that kind of stuff. So you can see what you're doing in terms of range and battery percentage. You got your parking stuff there again, and there's gravel mode, which you can easily press on and off. Uh, when you need to do so. 
and your volume control. So again, very straightforward, very minimalist. Over to the instrument cluster, like I said, this is 16.8 inch. So curved display, no frames on there. Has a bit of a 911 sort of esque design to it, which is really nice. One thing you notice on here is on the side here, there are buttons, so you can change your lighting. On this side here, we have some more buttons as well. So we've got this one to adjust your chassis. So you can actually adjust the level there. And then again, your height, you can change the lift. So you got some buttons there to control things that you want to control, but the main instrument cluster are there. And like I was saying, you can use this to control what actually shows on there. So like sport chrono, drive mode, and so on. Again, very minimalist, very straightforward. And we have our drive mode uh, rotary dial here. So you can change things from normal, sports plus, etc., etc. So you can change that according to your drive style, what you want it to feel like on the road. Overall, like I said, very minimalist, very straightforward. It's not overwhelming. If there's any qualms I have with this is the fact that this steering wheel can sometimes block uh, your view in terms of the actual instrument cluster here, uh, but you soon get over it and get used to the view itself. But it's very premium, minimalist, and very easy to get on with. First test of that gravel mode, um, because there's a couple of like potholes here, and sticking in gravel mode raised the chassis, so lifted it up, so that way I don't have a bumpy Oh, <laughs> see, you don't get a bumpy ride through there. So on the road in the Taycan 4S Cross Turismo, this is a fantastic car, hands down. And price point aside, I think I said 118 or something like that. This is actually 110,000 pounds plus, uh, just with all the extras added on uh, for you. So things like your sunroof, the roof rails, and all that kind of stuff added on. That's how much you're looking at. So. It's kind of, kind of pricey, but that aside though, you will get what you pay for in this because it's so premium feeling. And when it comes to the driving element, this feels so stable on the road, it's incredible. And it's also very comfortable as well. So those air suspensions are doing a fantastic job at keeping the car nice and comfortable. There's loads of options in terms of changing the characteristics. So for example, the chassis can be changed to you know the Sport Plus mode, which allows you to have that stiffened uh, chassis. But if you just want to drive it on an everyday basis, day-to-day -day basis, you stick it in normal mode and you're good to go. Again, all this will affect the kind of mileage, the range that you get out of this. Now, Porsche has quoted up to 297 miles on the WLTP. If you're gonna get that, absolutely not. I've only had this for a day, so it's hard for me to actually fully judge what the consumption's like. But I think, if I'm to guess, I think you'll be getting around 200 miles comfortably well. But you can charge this very quickly if you can find one of those ionated charging stations and you can charge some very quickly using that DC rapid charge. There's also a card that you get if you buy one of these, which gives you access to Porsche network, which includes INAT, so you can get like 30p per kilowatt hour or something like that. You get that for up to three years, and after that, you can pay for a membership, which is around 180 pounds or something like that. Don't quote me on that one. But you can pay for the membership, so you still get that discounted rate compared to, I don't know, maybe 70p per kilowatt hour now that you get at INAT. They're quite expensive, but again, you get what you pay for. It's very fast. Uh, and so on. But back to the driving characteristics on this. I love the steering on this. It's very, very well weighted in the way that I like it to be. So it's not too soft, it's just nicely weighted and very, very precise. So little, little flick like this, the car's ready to do what it wants to do. And this has uh, Porsche Torque Veteran Plus, which means depending on what, you, what speed you're driving at, what road you're driving at, the back wheels can also turn to allow for better tighter cornering and also just extra dynamicness and stability of the vehicle itself. So it has all it takes to be a very, very high performance vehicle, but in a shell of something that's practical. Oh, I just went over that speed bump there. I barely feel it. And even with the 20 inch alloys on here, which normally means, you know, more road noise, you know, less comfortability when you're driving it, but it's balanced out using the air suspension and things just feels really nice. It's such a lovely car to drive very fast, zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds. And for a car that weighs 2.2 tons, boy, that is quick. You feel the weight as well when you're driving. It's a heavy car. You do feel the weight, especially when throwing it around corners. But having said that though, body roll is very minimal in here. So that is very surprising to me actually. So going around this corner here, I can easily just put my foot down. Instant, instantaneous uh, power goes through this, which is fantastic. Absolutely love it. The brakes are great as well. Energy recuperation is there if you need to through the braking system. So it's not one of those one pedal drive system where you lift off and then it kind of slows down. Porsche said they don't need to do that. It's actually better using the brake system to do that, which is good. I think they said something about if you were to be doing 200 kilometers per hour, obviously on the Autobahn, uh, for example, and you take your foot off and you brake, 
all the way down to zero, this will actually give you a rapid, rapid energy recuperation charge, like 267 kilowatts or something like that, which is ridiculous in an electric car for energy recuperation. More on the drive mode, if we put it into range mode, this is to maximize the amount of range you can get out of the Taycan 4S Cross Turismo. So for example, the AC goes into eco mode, uh, this, the chassis is fully lowered to the lowest it can be. Again, just to allow for the best aerodynamicness that you can get in this. And then we flick that up, uh, to normal mode, things are just completely normal. Uh, chassis is in sport mode, which is what I've left it at. Chassis level is high as well. And then we switch into normal mode and things are just completely normal. And at the moment, I've just got the chassis level set to high. Uh, so again, it's just raced off the ground. So, and then we go into sports mode. The sound kicks in as well. So you can actually hear the sound change when you flick it into sport mode, which is really nice. I like the sound the sound, what they've done with the sound. They've actually recorded the electric motors and then amplified the sound so it matches with what you're doing in the car. But in this mode anyway, the chassis go to sport mode, chassis level is high as well. But if we take it into sports plus, sport plus mode, the chassis level is fully low. So then again, allowing for that nice downforce and there we get the chassis uh, goes into sport plus. So it's a bit stiff again. So again, it gives you that extra sort of power that you can get. And that's also the mode that you go when you need to do launch control. So this allows you to do launch control as well. That's a party trick. It's not something that you do all the time, but you can do it over and over and over and over. So it's not something that just happens and then you have to wait over time or you lose the same sort of performance over time you don't. You can do the same over and over and over again and you get the same level of power in uh, launch control. So these things, honestly, I have nothing bad to say about this car at all in terms of the performance, the design, the practicality, the user experience in the cabin. I think it's all rounder, just fantastic. My only qualms with it though, is just the price point, but it's a Porsche. So if this was cheaper, everyone would have one of these, but uh, I think at least you get a lot of options for the price you pay for it. So you get a lot of boxes you can take in terms of the color, you know, things like the extras you can get, the modifications you can get to it so you can make it yours exactly how you want it to be. I've just turned into this road because uh, I really want to try that launch control and see <laughs> what that actually feels like. So I just need a nice clear road and I'm going to try that now and see what that feels like. This is, uh, <laughs> this is a nice road. Okay, so to get this to uh, do the launch control, I think uh, Kalik needs to hold on <laughs> to everything he's got. Um, yeah, so we put this into Sport Plus, right, fully depress the brake and launch control activated. So hold on tight, lug off the brake. Oh my God. <laughs> Woo. That is speed. <laughs> it's not a 4S for no reason. Taycan 4 Sport Cross Turismo. Boy, this is a beautiful car. It is, uh, it's a car that, honestly, I can't think of what can top this in this segment. Ooh, look at that tight turn. That little turn in there, no issues at all because the rear wheel can also turn to allow for a tighter turning circle. Man, this is good. This is good. Anyway. That's all about it from me, from the, uh, for the Taycan 4S Cross Turismo. Beautiful car, very, very much recommended. Uh, let's just ignore the price point, but I recommend it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, as always. And if this is your first time around here, please just subscribe, smash the bell notification as well. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.